So now that we've seen random processes, we've seen some definitions, we're ready to dive into the idea of a wide sense stationary random process. So we've seen before that the expected value of a random process in general is a function of time. Now suppose I restrict my attention to those random processes where that, that dependence on time doesn't exist where finally the mean value is the same no matter which instant of time I sample. So it doesn't matter when I sample the function, its mean is always the same value. So that's one uh, characteristic that I'm going to look for in a wide sense stationary process. So one requirement for a, a process to be wide sense stationary, it has to be um, a process where the stochastic average, the expected value, is constant in time. The second requirement for a wide sense stationary process is that the autocorrelation function is a function only of the time lag. So I said that in general Rx is a function of T1 and T2. But if all this dependency of Rx T1 comma T2 if I have some ex mathematical expression for this function, if every time t1 and t2 appear, they only appear as this difference, t1 minus t2, well, then I say um, it's a function only of the lag. And since it's a function only of the lag, then I can just rename that difference, t1 minus t2. I'm going to call it tau. So those processes for which these two moments, these two expectations, the first moment, the expectation um, without any uh, multiplication or uh, put to a certain power, so the first value, the expected value, the mean value, the average value, the stochastic average, if that is constant, that's the first criteria. And a second moment, a moment where I have the product of two random variables. If these two random variables are dependent such that their autocorrelation is only a function of their lag, so it's only how far apart it is, and it doesn't matter what the absolute value of the time is, uh, that's the second criteria for a wide sense stationary process. So for these subset of all random processes, which is the subset of wide sense stationary stochastic signals or random processes, in this case we have a definition of the autocorrelation function, which is well defined as the expectation of x of t times x of t plus tau. And in the end, it doesn't matter which value of t I use, because when I take the expectation operator, I'm just going to get a function that's only a function of tau. So, given that uh, this is the definition of the uh, autocorrelation properties, the uh, pro uh, autocorrelation function, just from this definition, there are some several properties that sort of fall out given the definition. Uh, for this, it's not surprising to see that it's the exact same properties that we saw with the definition of autocorrelation for deterministic functions. So we had deterministic functions which were periodic, deterministic functions which were not periodic and they had these same characteristics and now if I just take this new definition of autocorrelation which is now for random processes so I have an expectation operator because they're stochastic but even with this expectation operator uh, I still get the same uh, properties and it just comes from the mathematics of the the lag so here uh, for instance it is uh, symmetric around uh, tau equals zero so if I just replace uh, t with uh, tau with minus tau, I'm going to get the, the same result. It achieves its maximum at tau equals zero. And now here comes a part where I'm going to, again, give a definition. There's going to be a, a Fourier transform pair. This is a function of tau. Tau could be a symbol for time. So it's a, I, can, I can define the power spectral density to be the Fourier transform pair of uh, this autocorrelation function. So that's what we do. This uh, symbol means uh, Fourier transform. And uh, of course, we can also say that when tau is equal to zero, if we put a zero in here, uh, we get this result. So that's kind of trivial. So um, autocorrelation property for random signals has, autocorrelation function for random signals has the same property as it does for uh, deterministic signals. And most importantly, 
the Fourier transform pair is used as a definition of the spectral density. So if we look particularly at this power spectral density, this function gx of f, which is the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function, what kind of properties does it have? Uh, again, from the definition, it's uh, strictly positive. It is um, symmetric when x of t is real valued. So if x of t is a real function, uh, which it is in our laboratory when we're dealing with communication signals, in this case, uh, just Fourier theory tells us that the um, uh, power spectral density will be uh, symmetric about the um, DC. Of course, we can always do the inverse Fourier transfer to pass from the power spectral density to go to the autocorrelation function, because it's just uh, inverse Fourier transform. And, um, of course, you can also think about the average power as being defined as the um, average, or excuse me, the area under the curve of the power spectral density. Now I'd like to talk to you about a couple definitions. Uh, if we look at um, random processes and try to think about how we can describe some of their properties, we've discussed some of them now, um, imagine that I looked at the comparison of a time average with a stochastic average. Okay, we talk about the average value of a function, but that could mean different things in different situations. So suppose I look at the stochastic average. That's what we've been saying about the mean value, about the expected value, and sometimes I call it the average value. But when I say it's the average value, I mean it's the average across the probability density function. So we know that if it's a wide sense stationary process, that this expected value, the stochastic average, is u of x, is, is, is constant in time. It's not a function of time, it's some number. Now I ask you, what about the time average? The time average, I'm going to be uh, giving it a definition, an average over a certain, let's say, a window of time. So some window of time of length 2 capital T. So 2 capital T is the width of time I'm examining, and I take the average of this uh, stochastic process over that interval of time. So I'm integrating with respect to time and I'm taking the average, so I'm uh, dividing by the length in time. Um, suppose I call that the average in time. Now imagine that I let time, uh, that integral, go to infinity. Uh, in that case, I'm getting, you know, sort of where is the average value of the function. But now this average has only to do with uh, the value in time. Let's see if I can make that clearer for you. So, here is a function in time. Here's a function in time, and I can say for this function, uh, I can define the uh, average time value for a certain size t, and then I can let that t go to infinity. And I'm going to call that the average of this function, the time average of this function. Now, of course, this was a one realization. Now imagine it's a stochastic process, not just a function of time, it's a stochastic process. So I could have many different realizations. And at each instant of time, of course, there would be a certain average. Now if it's wide sense stationary, that means no matter when I take the average, I'm always going to get the same number. So if that number that I get, that mu of x, when I take the stochastic mean, if that is the same as the time average, so the time average is the same, and this number, which is the time average, is the same as the stochastic average, that is a property of an ergodic process. It's ergodic in the mean. So a random process is said to be ergodic if the time averages give the same result as the distribution averages. Distribution averages, stochastic averages, mean, expected value, all those can be um, uh, replaced there. Uh, even ensemble average is another. So distribution average, ensemble average, stochastic average, expectation, all those things. And now we're comparing them to a time average. So there is this idea of, if we have a stationary process, a stationary process will be ergodic. But stationarity is stronger, ergodicity is weaker. So if I have ergodicity, that does not necessarily mean that I have stationarity. 
Okay, so um, be careful in the use of these terms. However, I wanted to bring them both to your attention because you can often see them uh, in the literature. I'll just finish with a reference to a list in the uh, Sklar textbook, which sort of looks at this comparison of um, stochastic and time values, and also uh, things that we might tend to measure in the lab and what that's related to the modeling that we do of this as a random process. So, uh, for instance, uh, in the, uh, the mean value uh, is uh, equivalent to sort of taking the uh, DC value, so that has to do with the Fourier transform and the power spectral density, and, and I won't go through all of them, but this is a nice summary that gives you this relationship between what we measure in the lab and the theory behind uh, when we talk about uh, random processes and power spectral density.